Good morning. It's the start of a new week and we can feel the freshness in the air. <laughs> if you have any Monday blues, <sighs> uh, don't worry. We have enough, uh, you know, enough energy to go around. Indeed. So we're going to be bringing <laughs> some of that to you uh, this We do, Monday we do, morning. we do. We definitely do. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Wake Up Nigeria. And we're about to serve you something really fantastic. My name is Mary Bashua Alimi. And I'm Yomi Okwe. We are streaming live right now at TVC Entertainment uh, TV and on Facebook as well at TVC Connect. So make sure you send in your comments on social media using the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Yeah, you can also download our mobile app uh, from any Android or iOS store uh, to watch us live on your mobile device from anywhere in the world. Absolutely anywhere. All right, uh, we'll move straight to the highlights yeah. now. Uh, from Askamaya Records, uh, Spider Rider will be giving a musical performance to start us off properly. <laughs> You know, of course, that Mondays are for history on Wake Up Nigeria. We have stories from the first gem man in space and others as well. Mm. <laughs> now, Harry Carter is a rising hip hop artist who will be joining us uh, to perform his latest single, Woski. I was expecting something that sounds like Woski. Apparently not. Well, for Monday Motivation, Fola Daniel Adelesi will be talking about why you have to try again. Mm. It brings Aliyah's song to mind, doesn't yeah. it? Try, try, try again. On car maintenance today, Ayosha Fela will be discussing common car battery problems. Mm. And you know when that car battery goes bad, everything else goes south. Indeed, indeed. And from there, we move on to SME because we have Shegun and Adironke Abiono, uh, who both are co-founders of uh, Nicole and Giovanni. They will be talking about their business much later on the show. Well, that's it for our Monday. Yeah. And now we're heading to the news with Ibrahim. Welcome to the news this Monday morning. We begin with a dis disturbing story of the abductions of four-year-old boys in, Lake, in a Lagos suburb. At least four such boys have gone missing in less than one month, and residents of Ilasa are trying to understand just what is going on. Our senior correspondent Ivy Khan reports on this. Ilasa Maja is a densely populated area in Mushin local government area. Number 10, Oluwakemi Street, Ilasa Maja, is home to the Gunwales and Mbachos. Both families had children, both boys, and aged four. The last time the two sets of parents saw their boys was August the 14th. Let them bring them to their home. That place is not their home. Their mother say, having been born the same year, the two boys share a special bond as they were always together, just like the way the day they were kidnapped. And I noticed that I'm not hearing their voice in the next compound where they are playing. And I went outside. My neighbor too, she came outside. He started shouting, Raphael. I said, I'm looking for Godwin. But what me I know is that it's people that know me, that know mommy and that, that do this kind of thing. I can't go with nine months in my house, I said the pen. So nobody will come and hear it my own. Their father said they have given police all information and hope something is done fast. I don't even know that such existed until when we get to Elasa police station. For me to see there was a child, four years child, taken away on the 1st of August. Four years old boy. Another person came from Idi Araba to report his own case also. When he heard he come around, his son was uh, taken on the 1st of uh, July, still a four years old child. My Godwin Mbachu, four years old boy, and Raphael Ogunwale, his friend playing outside, four years old child. Then that makes us to understand that within this Elasa community, there are syndicates, you know, kidnapping four years old boys, children. I can't go to anywhere, I can't walk, I can't. Is only going to the station. This matter now has moved from Elasa station to um, anti kidnapping. We will be there from seven in the morning, came back home eight in the night, every day, going to anti kidnapping, every day. 
he's the custodian of tradition in Ilasa Maja. As a traditional leader, he says the area has never witnessed what he described as evil, targeted at only boys aged four. The first thing I did was to embark on dissemination of information, notices to people with the usage of uh, this local means of communication, uh, a gong and stick. We made appeasement to all the gods of the land to drive away this kind of bad occurrences. We don't want it in our community. Residents say four children have been abducted in the last three weeks and they are hoping police rescues the missing children and arrest the kidnappers before they spread to other parts of Lagos State. Ivy Kano, TVC News, Lagos. And two of seven persons kidnapped in Dan Hono community on the outskirts of the Kaduna have been freed, leaving five still in captivity. Police Public Relations Officer Yakubo Sabo says efforts are on to rescue them and re arrest the kidnappers. Mr. Sabo also disclosed that more than 600,000 naira was recovered from one of the vehicles of the abductors. And President Muhammad Buhari has left Abuja to attend the seventh Tokyo International Conference on African Development in Japan. Uh, he was accompanied by governors Babangan Azulum, Abdurrahman Abdurrazak, and Babajide Sonwolu of uh, Borno and Lagos State. The conference will hold in the city of Yokohama from the 28th till the 30th of this month with the theme Africa and Yokohama sharing passion for the future. President Buhari will attend a state banquet and hold a bilateral meeting with Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. He's expected to push for broader Japanese assistance in the areas of science and technology innovation, among others. And as a news update for this hour, we'll have to take this short break. Spot is next. Okay, so we'll start off uh, with the Nation newspaper. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Let's start with the Nation this morning. Uh, 150 million euro probe. Detectives comb Obasanjo Library. Anti-graft agency probing 140 million dollars uh, given to official. And uh, that story you can find uh, on page five. Hmm. Now, of course, uh, up here, ministerial snub. A shock, says Shitu. On Southwest security outfit to begin. Uh, victims identify Wadume as kidnapper. AFC OKs $230 million uh, for nine mobile. And Kayamo, FBI suspect, is my friend. Finally, down here, Buhari Songolu Zulum Abdul Razak off to Japan. That's with the president. And you can see a photograph there of uh, some of the governors with the president on the presidential jet.
And I think you also yeah, have that on have the cover of the too. Punch as well. This yes. Morning. Okay, so the Punch newspaper, uh, I'll just take the quick headline here. $9.6 billion, a British firm listing Nigeria assets for seizure. Little known firm may impound naval vessels, oil cargoes. And then, of course, uh, the photo we're talking about uh, here, we have the Borneo State's governor, the Kwara State's governor, Mr. President himself, as well as the Lagos State's governor. Uh, moving on, Asiwaju accuses federal government of destroying Ogun tomato business. Power generation falls to 2,970 megawatts on this cause demand. Afeni Ferry meets Akintoye, denies Yoruba leadership talk. Here we see CBN sets limits for banks on non-performing loans. Man molest impregnates a Ekiti 16-year-old pupil. Mom discouraged me from going into politics. And that's coming from uh, uh, the governor there, Governor Makinde. A bank's software investment rises by 55% to 120 billion naira. Taraba killings, army to court martial uh, soldiers in Joss. Nigeria, U.S. working to curb online fraud. That's coming from the presidency. Nigeria's leadership degenerating progressively, says Obi. And uh, we have jam plans, mobile courts for exam fraudsters. Wow. And finally, world's smallest island nation's president loses election. All of the stories and more in the Punch newspaper today. All right. We've got some big stories in the vanguard. Uh, this Monday morning, August 26. OBJ, as of us on just showing how others wade into Yoruba leadership tussle. As Akintoye meets Afenefer leaders in Akure, uh, says nobody asked him to step down. Mixed reactions as Afenefer insists there is no crisis. That's uh, a big story on page 11 there. And there's some other stories up here. Um, half one. 2019, gloomy economy deflates corporate earnings and profits. And uh, here as well, state of the nation, better to part in peace than through war, Igbo leaders say. And uh, Nigeria needs divine intervention, uh, says uh, the general overseer of the MFM. And the nine mobile secures 82 billion Naira AFC facility. And at the bottom here, a couple of other stories. Godfather's not involved in my election, says Oya Governor. And Army's strategy against Boko Haram, faulty, the Borno Governor says. And Ngige mediates Nasu Sanu strike. And that's a story you'll find on page 8. And bandits attack police station in Enugu, cut away arms. Wow. That's another story that you'll find on the cover of the Vanguard this morning. Okay, uh, moving on to the Daily Sun now. Insecurity knocks kudos for Buhari. Junaid Sani Hamba faults government's performance. President has done well, say Army and Burma. Uh, here we see a woman daring the flood as she battles to access a house at uh, Jambuto in Yola, not local government area of Adamawa State, after her downpour. This is... <sighs> huge. Now, how Ekwiremadu Kalu facilitated Kanu's release from jail, and that's coming from a former IPOB lawyer. Uh, that's a story I read earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, FIRS, a plot to remove Fowler Pickens, intrigues power play. A U.S. fraud involving Nigerians, federal government to issue executive order. And finally, IPOB members flood Japan obey Kanu's directive to protest at the 7th e Tokyo International Conference on African Development, uh, that's TCAD 7, which Buhari is attending. We mentioned photos earlier mm. uh, regarding that event. Well, all of the stories and more on the front page of the Daily Sun newspaper today. All right, finally, uh, let's check out this day. Smarting from $9.9 .9 billion P&ID liability. Federal government risks fresh $3.5 billion judgment debts. Wow, that's huge. Presidency outlines roles of chief of staff and SGF, and ministers, permanent secretaries, to sign performance bond. Uh, up here, federal government seeks $5 billion Chinese loan for Mambila Power Project. And NNPC records 77% rise in vandalism of its pipelines. Wow. That's huge. And down here, we have some other stories. An army police trade tackles at defense headquarters uh, panel on Wadume. Hmm. And finally, uh, we have a photograph on the cover of this day 
with the caption, Baba goes to Tokyo. Uh, Presidency, uh, President Muhammadu Buhari departs for Tokyo, Japan from the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja. And this was yesterday. That's what we have on the cover of this day. All right, I believe that's about it. Uh, for this hour. For this hour, <laughs> the newspaper headlines, that is. Mm -hmm. We'll take a break and return shortly with the traffic situation in Lagos. Stay with us. Welcome back. It's time for the traffic updates in the city of Lagos. Now, please note that you can always be a part of this segment by sending a message on Instagram, Facebook, and on Twitter to let us know what the traffic situation is and perhaps take a traffic selfie if you're not behind the wheels. Yeah, but if you're in traffic, I'm sure you can. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I've got uh, Mike and Mary in the kitchen who are on standby with the social media updates. So hopefully we'll have a few uh, this morning. All right, guys, so let's uh, start from Ojodubega, where, um, as usual, things are not too bad when you get on the express until you start approaching Ojota. That's Ojota on the bridge, where it starts to slow down around 7 up. Now, after that, you can, uh, it's a bit free as you go along the, uh, the Oworoshoki Express towards the towards Oro, and then uh, it's a bit free not too bad until of course you arrive on the third Milan bridge it's even you know slightly free on the first or one or two kilometers on the third Milan bridge and then it starts getting busy from the middle and then very busy as you go along towards unilag and all of that it's very quite tight right now on the third Milan bridge so it'll take you a while to be on the Thermal Bridge today, maybe about uh, 40 minutes on the bridge itself as you approach uh, the island. But it's quite busy. It's a Monday morning. It is expected at this time. It's 6.30. And uh, so all the way to the island right now, it's quite busy. So whether you're going through um, approaching uh, the island through Abalende or through uh, Boni Camp and all of that, it's quite busy. Whether you're going to VI, Ikoi. So uh, if you leave the house, at Ojudubega this morning, heading to the island, it will take you about an hour, 40 minutes. Less than two hours, but yeah, one way or the other, you should, you should be able to make it. Now, let's check alternative routes for going to the island from the mainland today. So if you, were, if you decided to go through Ikorodu Road today, it's also quite busy. Uh, I just want to see how long it will take you by comparison with the third mainland bridge. Uh, yeah, there we have it. So, as usual, it's quite busy. All the major bus stops on uh, Ikorodu are causing traffic uh, this morning. So, whether you're coming through, so from Maryland, it's uh, quite busy. It's free slightly around Maryland, but once you start heading out into all the major bus stops, whether it's Palm Grove or Onipan or Banikoru, Antoni, it's quite busy on the third Milan Bridge. Oh, sorry, on the on Ikorodu Road. So slightly, it might take you, on the Thermal Line Bridge, it's slightly faster, just about 10 minutes faster than Ikorodu Road this morning if you're going to the island from Ikeja or from uh, any of the um, uh, adjoining towns in this area. Uh, do you guys have any updates for us uh, on Twitter? Yes. So um, th this is something that uh, is definitely going to cause a lot of traffic this morning. So if you have to go to Oshodi this morning, you might want to consider uh, passing alternative routes maybe through um, GRE or thereabouts because uh, there's a broken down truck. Like when I say truck, I mean a huge one, the container types. Uh, it's at the road linking airport's uh, overhead bridge. Uh, so there's a traffic diversion from airport bridge to PWD, and it's caused by that. Uh, so basically, if you're trying to come, uh, if you're trying to get on the bridge, what you'd probably have to do is go through uh, national access, go as if you, you know, you drive towards the airport, take that uh, roundabout, turn back to get on the bridge. Of course, there'll be traffic because there are also vehicles being diverted to pass the other side of the bridge, more like the one-way access, okay? Uh, so that area, the chaos this morning, 
especially as at now, uh, from about, say, an hour till now, the chaos is actually insane. So if you happen to be around that area, consider passing alternative routes to get to Oshodi or to get to GRA if you can avoid passing that route this mm -hmm. morning. That's mm -hmm. what's happening right now. Yeah, just almost a, a, a lot of other traffic sites retweeted mm. the same thing. So yeah. I think it's, like she said, it's quite... Yeah, so and then I try. see um, something about uh, the road along Guinness is uh, being fixed. So yeah. it's a one-way movement from the railway to Link or Bakran. So if you find yourself around there, please be very careful, be patient with all the drivers. Uh, don't try to overtake. You might end up causing even worse traffic. Okay? Yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of work ongoing in that area. Yeah. So hopefully over the next few weeks, uh, things should get better because it's actually the roads, uh, Obakran <laughs> Road has actually been quite bad this year. So yeah, it should be, we'll be thankful if it's uh, finally fixed. All right, so uh, coming from Ikorodu, let's say you're you know, going to um, Ojota, it's quite busy. All the major bus stops, uh, anyone that you can mention, uh, or from Owode, whether you're at Owode or Niri, the NNP, uh, NIPCO petrol station, all the way to First Bank, um, all the major bus stops are quite, quite busy. Uh, mile 12 on the bridge, it's quite busy. It's not, it's not blocked because I can see that it's a, it's a little bit orange, so it looks like it's moving. And it also looks like um, there's LASMA officials there because I know there's a strong LASMA presence right now over the past few weeks at mile 12, which is a good thing because they just help the traffic move along and then they don't allow the yellow buses to block the access. So it's moving, but it's very busy right now at mile 12 all the way to, um, to Ojota. Now, uh, the roads itself, the roads at Ojota are bad as well. So that's causing a bit of traffic, but hopefully uh, I think uh, construction has already, or already started in that area as well. Uh, not too, uh, it's not too shabby for a Monday morning, but it's very busy, very busy. So if you're not already out at this time, you probably should wait maybe about an hour until things begin to ease up a little bit before, before you go out. But if you want to brave it, well, it's up to you. I think that's about all that we could take on the traffic updates uh, for this Monday morning. I'm going to be heading to the kitchen now and hopefully uh, they have some coffee or tea ready. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll just quickly give these updates that are definitely going to be very useful. If you are around Bagada in Wadiyano, we're at about now. Um, the rescue team ought to have finished working, but just so you know what probably caused the traffic before you got there. Uh, I'm, on, I'm on LASMA, follow LASMA on Twitter, and it says the rescue team came across an abandoned Honda uh, CRV at Bagada in Wadiyano, Wuru. And the impediment is likely to affect free flow as uh, influx increases. Uh, besides that, due to the breakdown by Mobilaji Bank Anthony flyover, uh, coupled with the high influx uh, movement from Dokemu on that bridge all the way to airport bus stop is heavy uh, but moving. And there are efforts to evacuate impediments uh, ongoing. And finally, movement from Olo Access Bridge to connect post offices heavy. Uh, General Hospital on the bridge in what post office is also heavy but moving and post office all the way to local airports is confirmed heavy, but moving due to high influx. And that update came uh, about uh, a minute ago, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's it uh, uh, for this morning. Uh, her, earlier, guys, you were talking about uh, the 23 Nigerians. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's, always, it's always a sad thing when you're hearing about, so we, we hear one or two pockets of great news about Nigerians doing great things. Yeah. For instance, you know, um, Apple bought a one billion dollar Nigerian uh, Niger Nigerian owned firm. Yeah. Well, he's Nigerian American, but you know. So we heard that. So everybody was you know, cheering with the news, and then suddenly, within an hour or so, uh, we heard about the 23 Nigerians who are in death row apparently yeah. in Saudi Arabia. So it's just very sad. Um, our our image abroad has hasn't really improved in the past 20 years. That's the truth. So, I don't know. There are some people yeah. who tell you they love working with Nigerians. Nigerians are hardworking. Nigerians are so many positive qualities. Unfortunately, most times, the bad news about Nigerians seems to take headlines. Yeah. Because you hear a lot of Nigerian this, Nigerian that. And so when you meet a good Nigerian, your first instinct is, 
you're wary, you're wondering. Mm. And then, of course, we have the issue of um, uh, Invictus and what that would have done to our image as well, because it was someone that many people trusted. They mm. believed, oh, hardworking Nigerian young businessman and all. So it's, it's heartbreaking when you hear of all of these things. And to think 23 young Nigerians are about to lose their lives. Everyone knows that if you're going to carry drugs to the UAE especially, mm. it's as good as you saying goodbye to your life. True. And then you have this belief that you can get away with it. I don't True. understand. Mm. And, uh, so also I, a number of people go on about uh, PR, you know, uh, some people try to th trend some other hashtags about how good Nigerians mm. are and all of that. Which is there, by the way, my, my own is that um, we, ha we have to do a lot of things inside. <laughs> we have to do a lot of things inside. You see, someone says that it is madness if you keep doing the same thing and expect different results. <coughs> there is a constant trajectory, there's a progression. It's been getting worse and worse mm. and worse. It will get worse mm. as it is if we don't do something to stem the tide. It will take time. We need to do something to stem the tide. Yeah, you're trying to trend some other hashtag. Of course, That's we know that everybody, yeah. yeah. We know that everybody, um, uh, there are no absolutes. You can't say all Americans are mass killers or yeah. mass shooters or all Londoners. They know, but the point is that these are the ones that we, I mean, you, you even get to a point whereby someone told me, a friend came in from the US, an American. He said he was in a taxi and he wanted to use his card. His bank, they never allow him to use his own money in Nigeria. Mm. They closed all, what they did was that they closed all transactions. Once he was in Nigeria, he can't use his card in Nigeria. Mm. So that means that even your own money, their bank said that they want to protect you in case anything. <laughs> like, it, so he was told he can't yeah. use his money. So what he does is that he will have to call, send a call, and they'll send him maybe what he needs for a particular, like the process yeah. to use foreign money even here yeah. with his own card. I, I noted that there, there are several websites now that you can't visit from Nigeria. Yes, <laughs> several in Several fact. websites. So let's say you Especially want to, those because like apparently what's been happening with credit card fraud mm. is that you use somebody else's credit card and mm. order something yeah. exactly from those websites and then they deliver it to you in Nigeria. Yeah. Mm. Either Nike shoes. So what happens is that? Um, PlayStation. Just uh, expensive items. Expensive then they will items. Sell it at so now, prices. now you can't even go on those websites. Yeah. True. From, so it wants to see your IP address is Nigeria. It's so Nigeria. Tell you that this site is banned, is banned. or so what happens banned from that? you can't so you, it doesn't even open mm, what happens is that before now these guys bypass these things you understand so the ip is mm. the guys in nigeria but except you have a deep you know you have something that can uh, a deep protocol something that can break down all this kind of mm. uh, firewalls and all of that you'll be seeing the guy somebody else will be seeing the guy from germany you can be seeing the IP yeah. as if it's in Brussels, yeah. in Belgium, somewhere. Yeah. But Baba is in Nigeria. Same way someone can be in Nigeria and use UK number and call you. Yeah. And the person is in computer village. <laughs> UK number to call you. <laughs> see, see, what can we do? Way forward. Oh, we have to deal with ourselves. We have to. We have to. But there's nothing trending um, alternate hashtags trying to boost the image. It's not a PR thing. Because, you we know, I told, to you, I, I told you that this will happen. <laughs> I told you that the, the, our own response, we always have these knee jerk, mm. knee -jerk responses yeah. to things. Um, put in our fires. Mm. So something happens and then we just pay a few, a few influencers, a few millionaires, and then tell them, please, just, okay, just train so this hashtag. So what, what we need to do, I think one of the things that we're not paying attention to, which we don't think uh, is possible, mm. is just like it was possible with Trump mm. to ban, um, complete, issue a blanket ban mm. for visas from some specific countries. He oh. did it. Yeah. They fought him all the way to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court said that, yeah, that he's the president, that he's able to do it. To do it. it is possible that they can issue a blanket ban on Nigeria. So that, that I'm, I'm just saying that, I'm not saying that they're thinking about it. I'm just saying if it has happened with other countries, it, it can, can happen. happen with yours. So don't assume that, ah, no, they need Nigerians around the world. So they it, probably don't. The thing is this, um, there, there's no country that doesn't have issues. It would be so easy for the U.S., for example, to say, okay, we don't want Italians in our countries, but they are aware of the fact that there are many Italians contributing positively. Yeah. Same thing for Mexicans. You see what is going on between the U.S. and Mexico even right now. So I, what we need to do now as young people, we need to resensitize ourselves. It's something that is extremely important. Enough of the, uh, where the government, the government doesn't owe anybody anything all over the world. As soon as we start disabusing our minds from that, we'll go a long way. And we also need to remember, reputation is more valuable than money. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen.
Welcome back. Let's take a look at tech updates this Monday morning. You know how we do it. Something quite interesting might happen if you attack a robot. Now, not just in Nigeria, anywhere. In most advanced countries that have started using robotics, it might photograph you in the act. Now, humans haven't quite reached a wall e like society where robots care for every possible need, but we do have a few roving security robots that can monitor places like banks, casinos, malls, and hospitals, so human security guards can catch a break. Now, some people don't seem to like the new robot cops. Earlier this month in Hayward, California, a security robot captured a video of an alleged attacker shortly before he bowled it over. Now, these bots help on-duty guards with minor tasks like scanning a doorway, but humans still need to intervene if a robot detects something out of the ordinary and robots from both Nightscope and Cobalt don't have weapons, so they can't use any force. So tackling one of these robots is quite a bit of a cheap shot. So that's it. If you attack them, they don't have uh, weapons, they can't do anything to you, but then they can photograph you, and of course you can be prosecuted uh, for that. All right, and then um, uh, moving on from that, you know that uh, there was quite a lot that happened, but then Google has disabled 210 YouTube accounts after it said China used the video platform to sow discord among protesters in Hong Kong. The search giant which owns YouTube followed in the footsteps of Twitter and Facebook, which earlier last week said China had used their social media sites to spread misinformation and discord among the protesters, who have spent weeks taking to the streets to demand China stops interfering with the semi-autonomous region's affairs. Now, in a brief blog post, Google's Shane Huntley said the company took action after it detected activity which behaved in a coordinated manner while uploading videos related to the ongoing protest in Hong Kong. So there you have it. 210 accounts deactivated. And moving on from that, Netflix is still the number one subscription streaming service in the U.S., according to a new report from eMarketer. But rivals, including Amazon, Prime Video, and Hulu, are starting to cut into its market share. The analyst firm forecast 182.5 million U.S. consumers will subscribe to over-the-top streaming services this year, or 53% of the population. Now, Netflix is still the top choice here with 158.8 million viewers in 2019, and it's continuing to grow. However, its share of the U.S. over-the-top subscription market will decline even as its total subscriber numbers climb, the report said. Now, this decline in market share is attributed to the rise of rival services like Hulu and Prime Video. Hulu, for example, is estimated to reach 75.8 million U.S. viewers this year, or 41.5% up off subscription service users. The number of viewers will also increase by 17.5% in 2019, but this is a drop from 2018's big growth spot of 49.6. Prime Video, meanwhile, will remain the second largest subscription over the top video provider in the US in 2019, the report says, with 96.5 million viewers, which is up 8.8% over last year. And then uh, something else quite interesting for those of you who like gaming on your mobile devices, by the end of 2019, the global gaming market is estimated to be worth $152 billion, with 45% of that, which is about $68.5 billion, coming directly from mobile games. Now, with this tremendous growth, 10.2% year-on-year, to be precise, has come a flurry of investments and acquisitions. Now, everyone wanting a cut of the pie. In fact, over the last 18 months, the global gaming industry has seen $9.6 billion in investments. And if investments continue at this current pace, the amount of investment generated in 2018 and 2019 will be higher than the eight previous years combined. Today, mobile games account for 33% of all app downloads, 74% of consumer spend, and 10% of all time spent in app. It's predicted that in 2019, 2.4 billion people will play mobile games around the world. That's almost one third of the global population. In fact, 50% of mobile app users play games, making this app category as popular as music apps like Spotify and Apple Music. The second 
only to social media and communications up in terms of time spent. Now that's it. Quite a lot will happen when it comes to mobile gaming. A number of us uh, start, have started gaming on our mobile. I personally, I would like to go on a console and all of that. But hey, come on. If you do love mobile or if you're an app developer, mobile gaming is the way to go. Secondary, of course, to our social media apps. That's talking about WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, yeah, for business people and all of that. And all the likes, communication, apps but then second on that list and growing very very fast gaming apps so if you're an app developer gaming apps is somewhere that you might want to look into that's what we can take on tech this monday morning there's still more to come on the show but hey uh mary do you have something for me or i, I see some kind of activity going on there my, and uh <laughs> Mary, can you tell us what's up? Yes, I can tell you what's up. There's going to be a lot of baking in the kitchen this morning. And I've got with me somebody's namesake here. Talking about Chef Mike yes. <laughs> of Oban <laughs> Chefs. <laughs> All right, welcome to the kitchen this morning on Wake Up Nigeria. Chef Mike, what are we making this morning? I actually thought Mike was going to be with you in the kitchen today. I was going to do Mike Square <laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> so what are you baking for us this morning? Okay, today we are making what we call Frise Coach's Cake. Frise. Cold cheesecake. Cold cheesecake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. All those names there. Eh? Uh, okay. Yeah. I know you'll be like, what's frise? Yes, please help us uh, out with frise that. Frise is actually a French name for strawberry. Mm -hmm. you know, I try to make it unique so that people won't be like, you know, strawberry is common. So frise is all about strawberry. Cold cheesecake. With cold cheesecake. So when you say coaches, what do you mean? When I say cold cheesecake, cold cheesecake is a kind of cake that is a no big cake. You don't need oven for it. Mm -hmm. You just pre-mix it. And then you put it where? You put it inside the freezer to set. That's where the cake will be baked? Yes. So like we are going to have, like it's just like you having strawberries in all your cake. Ah. Eating strawberry and eating cheesecake at the same time. Ooh. So. Okay, so let's get started. What's the first thing we're doing? Yeah, the first thing we're doing is to make the sponge cake. Okay. The sponge cake is a very fluffy cake. Okay. Which let's we're talk going about to the make. ingredients. Okay. Uh, we're making use of strawberries, of course. Yes. Uh, what is this? Egg. Eggs. There's a whole egg. Mm -hmm. Granulated sugar. Okay. White flour. Okay. Our Oreos, cookies. Okay. cookies. Okay. Then we have our cold cheese already mixed here. This is just cheese or there are other additions? There are other additions. What, what's in it besides okay. cheese? Cold cheese is made with whipped cream, already oh, whipped cream. Okay, you're saying cold cheese. cheese yeah. That was what I was asking you. I thought I had cold cheese. Cold cheese cake. Cold, like yes. cheese then cold. Ah, exactly. fantastic. So we have cold <laughs> cheese here. Yeah, we have whipped cream. We have, whipped cream. Yeah, we have cottage cheese. Okay. We have Icing sugar, okay. then we have our vanilla flavor. Okay, so all you did it. was just whip them all up yeah, at the same time? At the same time. Okay. And set it aside okay. inside the freezer okay. to set. Oh, it well. has to be placed in the freezer immediately? Yes, yes. Okay. You don't bake it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If you don't place it in the freezer, it doesn't give you what it you want. It doesn't give you what you want. Okay. So, so this has to be done before you bake or? Yeah, it has, has to be done before you bake. Like how many hours? Uh, let's say about... 30 minutes because so, oh, it okay, needs to set in the freezer. Okay, so 30 minutes to get this one ready. Yes. Okay, so uh, we all we are going to do what next now? Now, the first thing we yeah. are making frise cold cheesecake, mm -hmm. or which you can also call strawberry cold yeah. cheesecake. Mm -hmm. You first make your sponge cake. Okay, let's start now, with that. What, making what, the sponge cake, what? you need a mixer. Okay. In the mixer. Which goes in first? The eggs goes in first. The eggs go in first. Okay. So, so. we are going to whip the egg. Okay. Lightly. So oh. Or high speed. High speed. Yes. So we might have to go on a break for us to whip the egg on yes. high speed. So here's what you're going to do for me. You're going to run me through the entire process. Okay. Okay. And then, yeah, I forgot to ask you, what is in here? Okay. Yeah, we have our strawberry mirror glaze. Oh, okay. So you will and see the here? result of the. This is strawberry sugar syrup. Okay. So there's a lot of strawberry going on. Yes. Okay. What about this? Uh, this, uh, we are going to use it for the chocolate sauce. The later. chocolate sauce, yes. much later. Okay. So we have the strawberry and chocolate. 
It's my lucky day. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's get back to this. First thing, we, we whip um, the eggs and the sugar. Yes. What next? Then after we fold in the flour. So the, the flour has to be folded in? Yeah. Okay. So let's so, have the air. Yeah, because okay. sponge cake is a, is a no butter cake. You don't need to put butter in it. Okay. It's just the egg, sugar and flour with the flavor. That's all? That's all. Eggs, sugar, whipped, then the flour, flour for, folding. folded in. Yeah. And then afterwards, um, you... We bake. We bake. Yeah. So now, how are you going to make use of this? Like, are you going to put this on the pan? Yes, this is a cookie cutter. Yeah. So you call it rim. Yeah. So we place it on the baking tray. Okay. We glaze all the tray. we glaze all the sides. Then after the sponge cake has mixed the butter, okay. you pour it in. Okay. And you're allowed to bake. So by the time it bake finish, you bring it out. Okay. And so then the form has been is ready. Cake, yeah. Wow. It's jelly, very wow. fluffy. See, the best part of this for me is the fact that I don't need an oven. <laughs> All you need is your refrigerator, better still your freezer. Yeah, right? freezer. Which yeah, one is freezer. better, refrigerator or freezer? Freezer is better. Freezer but, is better. But basically, uh, when we are preparing this, you still need to bake this. You still need to bake this? You'll bake this because this is the base of the cold cheesecake. Okay. It's the layer. So yeah, he's going to, these things are becoming too technical <laughs> for me. So he's going to show us all of this in the course of the show. Yeah. Right now, however, it's time for us to take a break. We have so much more when we return on the other side of the hour. Stay with us. <laughs> Again, <laughs> one hour has gone by. Get up Ready. and get on with it. So this is Wake Up Nigeria. Yes, a new week is here, so you should have your goals for the week outlined already. And if you don't have them yet, you can just watch Wake Up Nigeria. That is one goal for the week. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Monday is as bright as can be. So yes. thank you for tuning in. Thank you so much. And uh, this man right here with this nice uh, cashmere tie this morning. Uh, is Yomi Owoku. So Yomi has been feeling himself all morning. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know I what's totally been like today. Look, uh, today. Yeah. I totally like my I am Mary Bashwa Alimi, and we are streaming live at tvcentertainment.tv and on Facebook at TVC Connect. Yeah, sending your comments <laughs> across our show, social media platforms. Uh, that's on Twitter, Instagram, and on Facebook with the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Now, please remember we have our app, yes, and it's available for download at both Android and iOS stores. Now, this awesome app allows you to watch us from anywhere, absolutely anywhere in the world. Mm. Now, of course, uh, Mary was in the kitchen earlier on yeah. with a brand new chef for you today. Yeah. And uh, he's in the kitchen right now. He's getting really, really busy. I saw cookies. I, look, once I saw the cookies, I just... <laughs> Yeah. You, you wish you could switch places mm -hmm. immediately. Yeah. So that's so Chef I, I Mike how that work. Are. Yeah, so Chef Mike is getting things ready. Yes, uh, Chef Mike of Urban Chefs. And he is making his debut on the show today. Mm. Hi, Chef Mike. How you doing? Just Welcome. look up a bit, just for a minute. Just, just, just give yeah. us a look. Yeah. Say, okay, wait to the camera say go. hi to us. Yeah. <laughs> and he's also a little bit handsome. I can see that, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's putting a little bit of vibe out so there. So what's with you and morning. looks this morning, Yomi? Oh, yeah. Well, you would have to explain this. We'll talk about it. So there's something <laughs> that your look does for you on a Monday that also adds to your motivation. Mm -hmm. So that, that's really, really So your Yomi's motivation this week is look good. So look, look how good his outfits look this week. <laughs> anyway, we have a couple of historical facts to remind you of uh, this week in history. That's right. So that is going to be happening very shortly uh, on the show. Yes. And right after that, you can expect a musical performance from rising hip-hop artist Harry Carter. Mm. Now, in continuation of uh, dealing Okay, that's uh, that's Harry Carter on on right there. And in continuation of our talk on dealing with rejection, uh, Fola Daniel Adelisi will be uh, joining us to talk to us about how to keep trying in the face of multiple no's. So no matter how many no's you get, 
uh, you're going to learn how to keep uh, keep at it no matter what happens That's right and uh, if you sometimes have to deal with overheating in your car we started that last week Ayo Shofela will be discussing common car battery issues <coughs> mm. so you look forward to that now also on the show today Shegun and Adironke Abiona will be joining us uh, on the show on the SME segment to talk about their journey to uh, founding a company. It's always a journey to founding yeah, any company. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, I have a few things happening today in history. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so um, today is uh, Dog Day. Dog Day, so dog like, day, own like dog and... dogs, like you have dogs, you own dogs, you love dogs, depends on what you like. Okay. And the one that interests me and makes me miss TT and MM today is the fact that today is Women's Equality Day. Oh, okay. This is a subject that has caused a lot of drama, especially on social media. Uh, yes, today is so women, uh, Women's Equality Day. Yes, today is Women's Equality Day as well as Web Mistress Day. Uh, web Mistress as against Webmasters. You know, oh, we right. tend to always say Webmasters, forgetting that there are females in the business as well. Yeah, but a Webmaster can be female. Well, there's now Web Mistress. <laughs> so this <laughs> okay. is a reminder. It's also kind of like a cut off from the whole Women's Equality Day. Mm. Now, not But to we're equal on this show. I mean, you yeah. know, we, we, we treat everybody equally. Mm -hmm. And as you, I mean, as you can see, we're treating you as an equal on the show. We're not trying to... Okay, so... Especially we're not trying with to oppress my, you. We're Mike, not trying are you to oppress scoffing you or you are chuckling? Which one? No. No one. Which one are you doing? <laughs> no one. Is there any other, any other thing left? <laughs> we're after the about, actually, we're talking mistress. about bride price earlier. Bre on. Yes, we're talking in about the bride price in the So we, that, an, an argument ensued. <laughs> and I was saying that, look, you guys, you people are always talking about equality. equality. Now you're f trying to force the guy to pay a bride price. Some women have started paying their own bride price, but you won't know. <laughs> no, you pay to the groom if they want equality. <laughs> They pay on behalf for of a them. while, it's like some centuries, yeah. Like, yeah, for like a century or two, <laughs> so they know what it feels so like. So they can be equal. You guys are not going to get yeah, to it. We're going to talk about this later. Mm. But so you've already met him, Chef Mike. How are you doing? Oh, okay. good. So, we already have our spread here. Yeah, this looks very, very sumptuous. <laughs> this morning, morning, I've seen a lot. But you know the first thing we do, we're going to start with the ingredients. What are we preparing, first of all? Yeah, we are preparing frise cold cheesecake. Frise cold cheesecake. cheesecake. What was frise? Yeah, I know you'll be wondering what frise is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, frise is, a, is strawberry. Strawberry. It's a French language for strawberry. Oh, okay. So, I'm trying to make it, like, unique. Okay, all right, in no. your own way, that's good. Okay, so, so let's go over the ingredients. Let's start from what so we have So first, here. we need to make our base, which is the sponge cake. We have, we have the egg and the sugar in here. Okay, we already have the egg and the sugar in the mixer. This yes. is the mixer. Yeah, this is, is, is that the, the original mixer. name? Mixer, just mixer. Mixing machine. Mixing machine. Yeah, no, if I want to call like, like a machine, with like, you know, yeah, with swag, like, I know what I'm saying. I'll just say mixing machine. Yeah, he said Just mixing machine. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that mixing okay. machine is okay. long. All right, mixer. good. All right, good. So this is uh, what we have here. This is our white floor. White floor. Okay. What do we have this here? This is Oreos. Oreos. Cookies. Okay. What do we have here? We have our kiwi. Kiwi. This is kiwi, eh? Yes. All the right. One. The strawberry. Okay, there's some strawberry inside the inside kiwi. Okay, the I thought kiwi, it was yes. okay. So that's kiwi. This is strawberry. strawberry. Okay, so that's strawberry. Okay, this is how they are before yes, you cut yes. them off. Yes. Right? Then there's our strawberry glaze sauce. Stro Does it have strawberry flavor in it? Yeah, it's strawberry. Oh, okay, it has strawberry flavor. Yeah. All right. And then what, what's your? Then there's our strawberry syrup. Okay, strawberry syrup. Yeah. All right. And then what's this? Then this is our filling, which filling. is the cold cheesecake. The cold cheesecake. You know, we have strawberry. Okay. We have cold cheesecake. Okay. So we are having two cakes together. Together. Yes. Oh, that's that's that's, that's cool. So what, there's the feeling. What is this thing here that's looking like a <laughs> blood pressure machine or something? No, it's the is is the digital scale that we use in measuring all the ingredients. Ah, <laughs> this shit. <laughs> this just is on point. <laughs> so this is this for measuring, eh? Yes. Ah, it's so how do you do it? Yeah, you have to turn it on. When you turn Ooh. it on, you place. Uh, you place whatever you want to place. Whatever on Whatever you want to place. Okay, on let's it. do let's do a test run. Now, wait. Okay. We turn it on. Okay. We place. Now, this is showing the weight of, Ooh. of the glass cup. Of the glass cup, eh? Yeah. So now, if you want to use it to measure something, you tear it first. 
Oh. It gives a zero. So whatever you want to measure. You now pour it inside. Pour it inside. So that 246 you saw was 246 grams. It's not that. It's not like it was kilograms. Ah, 246. I'm not even that much. <laughs> Is this still okay? But I saw the G here. It's grams. So wonderful. Don't gonna stand on this kind of thing. I say you want to measure your own weight. <laughs> it's for Kentish the kitchen. Okay. Yes. So and then finally, what is this? What do we have here? Now this is the result of the sponge cake. Okay. But we are mixing it first. Okay, we have I'm to mixing bake it. it. Let's show them how the mixing machine. Okay. So, so, so what, are we, what what is inside this? this so we have yeah. egg. We have sugar. Okay, egg then, and sugar. Yeah. Then you whisk. When when you are whisking, you use a balloon whisk. We have different kind of whisk. Whoa. So for this type of Cake. We use balloon whisk because we need to whisk. blow it up. We need to blow it up, eh? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So while we're getting this done, let's take a break. Don't go anywhere. Myself and Mike were whisking here. Yeah? Balloon whisking. Be careful, don't do another whisking. It must be balloon. Right? We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. August. Yes, mm. and it's time for us to go have our first performance for today and this time it's by obiora is in uh he's about to give us a performance of his new single alert oh what mm, a way to alert, start the week i love it on which he features zanku master zlatan yes indeed. <laughs> that's what he likes to call himself uh, you know i like it you know this is the kind of thing the song you should hear on the monday morning indeed indeed alert. all right take it away <laughs> when money and i forget your sofa I, I, enjoy yourself you know easy to conquer Poverty in a disease. All right, so how about some Monday motivation for you today? Now, Fola Daniel Adelesi started a discussion last week about uh, rejection, dealing with rejection, and he gave us uh, some tips on how to, uh, how to deal with them. And we're going to be continuing on uh, along these lines. Uh, today, we're going to be focusing on why you cannot let a series of no's get in the way of trying again. I like that. You know, uh, we live in a country where you have a lot of entrepreneurs and people who, who have dreams about what they want to do, what they want to achieve, right. lots of things that people want to, uh, they just want to go out there and do it. But sometimes, after you receive 10 no's to your proposal, you just start thinking, you know, should I just go and get a job? <laughs> Let me just get a job and be a responsible citizen uh, and uh, be, contribute to my family or whatever it is. I can tell you I've been there repeatedly. Hmm. But, you know, one of the things you must first of all pay attention to is that no means next opportunity. Hmm. So when somebody says no, it means next opportunity. Another person says no, it means next opportunity. And you're going to hear it over and over again. Look at all the people that we know about who have been famously successful. There's not one of them who succeeded once at the first attempt. Mm. There are people who have to try it repeatedly. Sometimes, like we try to say, when somebody says no to you, it doesn't mean you're not good enough. What it probably means is that you need to do some form of introspection. Is this something you need to do differently? Is this something you're not doing correctly? Or does it mean that you're trying to sell to the wrong people? Mm. In one category, when you keep hearing no, it might be that you're selling to the wrong person. Take, for example, if I want to sell a particular kind of luxury car, mm. and I go to people who are living in penury, how long do you think it would take me to sell that car? It will probably take you longer. I may, not, I may never even sell it because it's in the wrong place. Mm. But if I take the same car, to a certain part of Lagos, it may not take 24 hours to sell the same car. So one of the things, or one of the reasons you're probably getting a no could be that you're selling to the wrong market or you're pitching yourself to the wrong set of people. So if you understand who you are, that's why we keep emphasizing your person. Mm. If you understand who you are, you will not go to the wrong set of people. You won't keep trying to push yourself on them. You won't keep trying to force them to accept your person or your ideals or your ideas. Now that doesn't mean that if you go to the right people, they won't say no. Sometimes somebody is just in, not in the right frame of mind. And sometimes somebody is just not in the right mood. Mm. And then they just tell you no. no so, but how about a situation where sometimes I've heard people say stuff like, um, uh, you're getting a lot of no's, you know your product is good. Uh, you know that this is the market that you should be in. Um, but you then hear people say things like maybe it's an idea that came before its time or um, you need to throw away the idea because 
you've been getting no's for too long. Is there a point where you say, okay, I've had enough? There's always a time to change your strategy. If, and I, I, I don't believe that ideas usually come before their time. What it just might mean is that the presentation of that idea, is, people haven't been receptive to it, and you need to find a way to get people to receive that idea. For example, when computers came in, people still loved their good old typewriters. People mm. were more comfortable with it. People who were secretaries in those days when computers were introduced had to go back to school to yes. learn how to use computers. Those of them who didn't lost their jobs. Mm. Those who did were able to retain their jobs. So sometimes what you need to do is to change your strategy. Mm. The no's will keep coming. We all will get the no's, whether we like it or not. There are a number of times everything is just perfect with your idea. Mm. And yes, it might just be that you just need to wait a little more. Hmm. For just you to a get that, yeah, just a little bit longer in, in some cases. So, how about this instance where we said that um, at what point should you then say, you know what, uh, I think I've had enough? You, maybe, you know, maybe sometimes I go. You, you, so maybe you, you, you waited one year, two years, three years, and, and nothing is happening. And, and nothing okay, is happening. Okay, th there's no, I can't give a time because it's different for different people. Hmm. For example, some people don't have to wait for too long, everything just starts clicking. And there are those who have to wait 10 years. Hmm. There are those who have to wait 20 years. There are those who wait seven years. It's like the issue of childbearing again. Some people get into the marriage and overnight they score a hat trick. Hmm. And then some people have to wait 10 years, 15 years, 30 years. But what you must do, because we're talking about life now and probably business and career opportunities, if, you're doing, if your main thing is not working, find something that keeps you going in the meantime, mm. but don't give up on the main thing. Don't keep your eyes off the main goal. Mm. You see, just like most Nigerian students, what we try to do is when you try to get into school, you want to study law, they don't give you law, then you go for English and you forget law completely. What we should, anti or what I anticipate is that after studying English, at some point, you're able to come back to that law, which is the original desire. But you know, people just give it up mm. here in Nigeria. Mm. But what you should do is, Find something that keeps you going. Find something that brings money into your pocket temporarily mm. or that sustains you while you're working on the main dream. D don't ever give up on it. Mm. There are times, for example, I was talking to somebody recently. In some other climes, digital marketing is, is a big deal. It's accepted. Mm. But in Nigeria, there are issues here and there. It's still not totally accepted. People are still skeptical. People want to see physical results. Mm. So what you have, something may not be wrong with it. The timing might be issue, the climb might be issue, the people you're trying to sell to might be issue. So you need to ask yourself, am I selling to the wrong people? Am I talking to the wrong set of people? Do they even, or am I even in the right environment? Now, for like, one of the things that um, uh, also I think is a big challenge to many people is uh, what should be uh, my frame of mind, my mindset when I'm going through these through these challenges. So sometimes, so I've heard everything you have to you've had to say today, and, and I've said to myself, okay, uh, I'm in it for the long haul. Um, no matter what happens, I'm going to stay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna not stay going put. anywhere. You know, this is, I know this is a yeah. long distance journey. Let, let me keep at it. But what should be my mindset while I'm going through this process? It, it, can be, it can be very tough. I'll tell you that, very tough and very discouraging. I've been there. I've been discouraged over and over and over again. In fact, I tell people that the reason I'm able to encourage you is because of the discouragements that I've had. So I'm encouraging you from the angle of my pain. Hmm. And when I speak to you from the angle of my pain, the reason we're able to connect is because my pain connects to your pain. That's exactly why we're able to connect. So what should be your mind frame is number one, keep somebody around you who believes in you. So those people are gonna constantly encourage you, look, this is an issue, it's not about you, it's not about your personality. You need somebody to keep repeating that into your mind, that it's not you, you're not a failure, it's just an event. It's something that you probably didn't get right. It's something that you can do differently. So you need people around you who believe in your person, who will keep encouraging you, at the same time, helping you to see what you can tweak. Don't just do it the same way repeatedly. What can you do differently? Who can you talk to or who can help you out? So the major thing 
keep things that encourage you around you. Mm. Then the second thing, keep people that encourage you around you. If the people around you don't encourage you, you have no business sitting with them. Now, as we get ready to, to round off this morning, there's, there's something that uh, you said at the beginning of this conversation, which was uh, no means next, next opportunity. opportunity, which is good, you know, uh, uh, on paper, <laughs> because sometimes you know that next opportunity, you know, it can be, uh, it can be pretty tough. Thanks. But how about a situation where you've been given a no in a particular location yeah. or a particular company? Yeah. Um, should you go back to where you have been given a no before, or should you go for the next opportunity? You you can go back because sometimes it could be that the timing wasn't right for that company, and some of the times, if it's a company that has that experiences change of leadership. Hmm. One leader may not be receptive to that idea, the next leader might be receptive to it. So yes, you can go back. Hmm. It doesn't mean that once they say no, you can't go back. And in some cases, it could just be that things have changed. So you can go back to the same person hmm. or to a different leader in the same organization. Yes, you can always go back. But when you're going back, add something new. Hmm. Don't, be, don't let it be exactly what you took there the previous time. Let's show them that you have additional value. Hmm. If you brought something to me five years ago and you're bringing it back today, should it be exactly the same thing? No. Hmm. Value should have been added. Hmm. There should be more propositions. Hmm. So that way it's even more exciting to me. Wow, Fala Daniel Delisi, thank you so much for, uh, for motivating us and this morning. thank you for never saying no to me. Yeah, <laughs> for motivating us uh, this uh, morning. Hmm. And uh, if you're out there, this morning and you're saying to yourself, they said no to me before. It's time to go back, according to Fala Adelisi. And even if they say no again, you know, you just keep going back until you get a yes uh, from them. Let's head back to the kitchen now, where the two guys, the two mics, are on standby for us. Hey, guys. Wow, that was quite uh, an inspiring discussion there. Uh, don't get scared of a no. Uh, the more no's, the closer you are to the yes. Nice one, uh, you're me and Fala Daniels. All right, so, I'm definitely not going to say no to this one this morning. Mike is here with me. So this is the baked cake after it has gone into the oven, right? Yes. After the mixing and all that. Yes. So this is what we are working on. This is what we are okay, working on. Okay, so let's on. get straight to it. Let's get straight to it. Okay. So let's get straight to it. First thing. All right, like you can see there, our menu for today, the Frasier cold uh, cheesecake. cheesecake. And of course, we showed you our ingredients, egg, flour, kiwi, ice and sugar, sponge cake, uh, cream cheese, of course, we have vanilla flavor, whipped cream, a granulated sugar, strawberry glaze, strawberry flavor, and of course, strawberry fruit. So we're working on it now. You yes. get uh, that issue. Okay, so we took off the, the, the top. The head, the top. Yeah, so, you so know, like, it's like the top of bread. Anyway, <laughs> people don't like eating now. Or, and all exactly. that. Okay, so, so we're working on this now. We are going to okay. divide it into two layers. Two layers. Oh, I, 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 I thought to we'll go this way, but. No, no, we're going this way. We're going this way. Yeah. All right. And that's if you're going to touch anything in my kitchen, so we are. Wow! This guy, this guy is vexy, man. Nice one. You need to be clean, eh? Oh. Okay, so let me see if I'm going to touch something. I definitely need to get my gloves on. All right. So that's it. That's it. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so we cut it and then we put it back inside. Yes. Okay. So we bring out right. the first layer. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so we drop the first layer. Yeah. Okay. So what we need to do now, this is the cold cheesecake. Okay. Filling. Filling, all right, that's yeah. the filling. And this is strawberry syrup. Syrup, okay. Yeah. So good. the first thing you need to do, you need to wet it okay. with the syrup. Mm. <laughs> so that it's in your soaking it all in. Okay, so this gives it that flavor. Yeah. That zinc. Nice one. nice one. Nice one. Nice so, one. So next thing we need to do, we're going to arrange the strawberry. Inside it. Yeah. Alright, let's go. The let's frisee. go. Let's call it frisee. The frisee. Yeah. Alright, nice Maybe one. French kitchen. Mm. Good. <laughs> frisee. So, La frisee. We arrange it around <laughs> like this. Uh, Oh, is that how I do it? Okay, well, yeah. well let me stand, right? Yeah, yeah, well, let me right, stand. All right, good. All right, good. Good. The way. Hmm. Hmm. So this one goes all the way around. All right? the way around, yeah, good. <laughs> uh, they don't know it. <laughs> okay, this is this is a physio. <laughs> why, why, okay, well, so why is it standing? Why, why are we making it stand? Okay, we are making it stand so that. Oh, by the time we pull it out from the rim, mm. it sticks to it. Wonderful. Okay, let's go ahead. Without let's go, falling. Let's oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And that's a... Uh, it's more like a magic. 
<laughs> okay, now this is quite interesting. This is quite interesting. I love the way this is going. I love the way this is going. So yeah, we're going round. We're almost round. I'm like 80% done. And uh, yeah. Chef no. is done. That's it. That's it. One last. This strawberry like this, they can eat it like this, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, I you know, people always think strawberry is sweet, but it's actually uh, sweet and sour. Uh, yeah, it, it does. It has that bite. Yeah. That spunk it gives yeah. you and all of that. So now this is our cold cheese. Okay, feeling. that's our cold cheese feeling. All so right. we pipe it round. Whoa. Round. Make sure it gets oh. to the edge. Whoa. Now. Hmm. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, mm. we put some strawberry okay. inside. You know, like I said earlier, it's more like you're eating strawberry and everything. So we have everything. Mm. Okay. okay. So now the next layer goes in. Whoa, that's how we cut it out, right? Oh, so you <laughs> press it. Okay. Press it, press it. All right. So, the next thing we need to do, mm. I think you should try that. Okay. Soak it with the syrup. I should soak it, eh? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Is... You know, it's not going to hurt. Yes. Yeah. Some people are, they want to come and soak it here themselves. Yeah, <laughs> All right, that's for cool. right. We're working on this. We'll take a break now while we're working on this. Don't go nowhere. we get back with the last four to five minutes of the show. Let's go ahead. Your favorite show has been well on the way for two hours, two whole hours. Mm. Officially the third hour. Welcome again. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and uh, what it means is that it's been two hours of bringing you everything you need for a proper Monday morning. Exactly. That's how start do. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Mary <laughs> Bashwa Alimi. And I'm Yomi Okwe. Stream with us live right now. Right now, right now, right now at TVC Entertainment.tv and on Facebook as well. Yes. Uh, check us out at TVC Connect. Of course, you know you can send in your comments using the hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC. Mm, well, of course, the TVC app is also available for you to download both on the Android and iOS stores. Mm. And the app allows you to watch us from anywhere Absolutely. right now anywhere. in the world on your device. That's right. So we move on straight to the highlights. Mm -hmm. Now, car maintenance. Uh, of course, is uh, we've been talking about problems that can be associated with uh, uh, when you're in traffic, anything can happen. Now, today we're going to be talking about batteries and when a battery problem develops in your car, the reasons why and what you should do. And then, of course, there will be Shegun and Aderonke Abiono who will be joining us to share their journey to earning a successful business in Nigeria. Now, somewhere between talking about the cars and, of course, talking with the SME folks, we're going to also have a performance by Harry Carter. Hmm. I believe Mike will be having a conversation Harry, with when I, when I had dinner, I thought it was Harry Potter. <laughs> 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 that was like Carter. You know, but, uh, you know, performance, talking about performance uh, yeah. and song, uh, it was a good one for Nigerian music a little. Mm. Uh, okay. Barack Obama released his uh, oh, yeah. regular playlist, which he does yeah. uh, from time to time, summer playlist, and this was him and Michelle. And uh, Rema was in it, mm. like I, I, Iron Man Rema. And I, was, I know, so a lot of people were like, ah, there's no, we don't see David Doe, we don't see Whiskey, we don't see Tiwa, we don't really, see Bonaboy, yeah. Gents, it's now uh, Rema. In fact, when I, when, I saw, when I saw the list, because I saw it trending, mm. so I saw the list and, you know, so I said, oh, okay, let me listen to the song to find out, you know, why it was um, creating such a buzz. Yeah. It's not a bad song. It's it's actually not. It has an Indian feel to mm. it, something like that. It's you know, so uh, that, that's real influencing, like, yeah. Like you had to, it, no, but so the videos. So even if people don't know him, the videos, the views mm. went poop. Yeah. Mm. This was almost what happened with Kanye West and Burner Boy. Yeah. When he released Ye. Ye and Ye. 
<laughs> this was about what happened. Yeah, okay. So Kanye West at the same time released a whole album which was Ye. Yeah. And Bonaboy had Ye as no, the song. No, Kanye's I think was Ye. Then yeah, but yeah, it was, was the same spelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was it was the same spelling, Y-E-Y-E. Yes. And so that same week, so he went up on uh, Apple Worldwide chat. Yes. Boom. Yeah. And so this is good. This is good happening with Rihanna. I know the views course, of that song. Talking about Bernard Boy, I don't know if you saw a video of him. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was, okay, so Elton John well, had uh, this uh, kind of like podcast stuff. Mm. And so he was talking about playing Bernard Boy's song. Mm. And then he goes, I am LT John, and this is Burner Boys. In fact, you weren't allowed to hear the rest yeah. because all Burner Boy kept doing was playback. <laughs> playback. You heard that? It's LT John. I don't blow. No, 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 <laughs> this, yeah. this, is, this is LT John, man. This is LT John. And I really like how, I mean, over, and this is over just a short period of time, so maybe the past two years, mm -hmm. that a lot of Nigerian acts have yeah. now gotten international exposure. Yeah. And you know, we we're just talking about keeping at it with Fola Dano just mm. now. Look, whatever it is that you're doing, whatever dream you have, keep doing it. Yes. Because um, when it happens, you're, I, it's just going to be completely out of feel. your hands. Yes. You know, and, I've, and this, is, this gives me the belief that on every other aspect, we, it's not just about image. Now, nobody's talking about what your work will speak for you. Yes. You will need to do PR, True. trying to push a good image. We now know, when you hear music in Nigeria, we know that we're synonymous with good music. Mm. The same way we can do it every other place. From our tech, those guys, I mean, it takes a lot to be that devious. It takes intelligence. So we can always have great things that way. And uh, you have a point. You, you know, know, our hackers and all these in quote Yahoo boys can turn their their craft to something more profitable. Well, it's very late for some of them now, but uh, <laughs> maybe, the, <laughs> maybe the younger okay, ones so. coming up. Yeah. <laughs> we have. You're welcome again. It's time for us to talk about your car problems. And of course, as usual on Automedics, we have Ayo Shufela. Great to have you on the show today. Good morning. Uh, today, we will be talking about uh, car battery issues, right? Exactly. Okay, so tell me more. Like, I'm um, a greenhorn, just like the color of the battery, <laughs> when it comes to batteries. Uh, tell me about the issues that uh, are associated with batteries. All right, so this is what a standard car battery looks like okay. except on German cars where you have longer batteries or the hybrids that you have a bigger battery with higher voltage but on a regular everyday car this is what you will find there okay. now looking at this we have two terminals okay positive terminal negative terminal how can you tell the difference it's usually labeled there you have okay. a minus because I thought because this one is stout and this one seems um, a little slimmer now apart from that you have a negative sign okay. and a positive sign okay. that tells you the negative terminal and the positive terminal. do all batteries have that sign yes okay. they always make sure they put it there so you don't cross terminals if you do that you could damage something on the car okay, okay. so with this now one of the problems that we'll be facing as car owners on a daily basis is corrosion building up around here. Corrosion? I don't know if oh, you've wow. noticed some whitish yeah. things that usually grow around the battery. It's actually corrosion. And one thing that causes that is when the battery terminals are not tight around this. Oh, okay. So you actually have space where it can be shifting around gradually, well, gradually you have a chemical moving. reaction going on there and then corrosion builds up. That can hinder the car from starting in the morning. So that's part of what causes um, the whole not starting and then you having to tighten bolts exactly. and all. Exactly, and then you see people come around and they're hitting the terminal, trying to shake it around and tighten it. Okay. It's the corrosion that has built up around the terminal. It's creating a resistance between this and the terminal on the vehicle. So for your battery to last longer, it's best to always make sure it's tight. Always before make you sure start it's tight. It. Then you can go further by putting grease around it. Oh, really? You can grease your battery? You can grease I your didn't battery. know that. Yeah. If you put grease around it, it will never grow corrosion. So even when it's loose, at least uh, the you grease, can put help grease there, there so will you help. You never it. have that issue. Oh, wow. So what else? Tell me more. Then another thing is the battery swelling. If you see cases where... That happens with phones as well. Exactly. They, that usually comes as a result of maybe a bad alternator that's overcharging okay. or when the battery starts to go out of life. Okay. You have a case where the battery starts to... So how can up. you prevent the alternator from overcharging, thereby affecting the battery? You as a car owner can't do that. Um. When the alternator is gradually going bad, it's definitely going to start either undercharging or overcharging, just like a phone charger. Okay. When it starts going bad, you're going to have that issue. So you cannot prevent that. It's definitely going to happen at some time in the car life. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing it. You, you can just do about to that. The only thing that you could 
um, do as a car owner is once in a while I'll take your car to your mechanic okay. or electrician. Then they run a test on the alternator okay. and they check it for you periodically like that. So okay. they tell you when it starts going bad. We should probably talk about the alternator some other time, exactly. but um, still on the batteries, is there any other kind of problem we should look out for? Battery fluid. You see this mark here? Mm -hmm. You usually have a green light in there that tells you when the battery is still okay. Okay, when, when the, it's powered, I mean? Not when it's powered, just like this. If you look down there, you see okay. a green light Let telling you the battery is actually fully charged, just like oh, this. Oh, okay. Now, when the battery starts to go bad, the fluid starts to go low, that light turns white. It turns white? Yes. So it begins to go low? The fluid ah. starts going low. Over time, the light goes white okay. or grayish color, depending on the manufacturer of the battery. Okay. And the moment that happens, you know you have the to change the battery. Gone. You have to change the battery. Aha. Uh -huh. What causes that? Is there any way to, sl to slow down the process? There's can do about that. It's just the way batteries are. Okay. Say, for example, now, is there something a car owner does that will probably speed up that happening or it's just something that it's with something time that will, will happen you could buy inferior batteries okay. where after maybe three months it happens or you could just buy a good battery and then maybe after a year or two it happens. so how, how long should a standard battery last uh a year two years sometimes three years depending on the manufacturer of the battery so it's well especially for a brand new car for you should change car, your should go like three years three years yeah. so you should change your battery every three years exactly. especially when you get quality batteries quality right quality battery okay. except the car itself has issues oh okay. there are cases like the alternator i've been mentioning there are cases where the car has electrical issues and it damages the battery quickly. electrical issues also damage the battery yeah. how okay take for instance you have something staying on in the car you see people that park their car overnight and next morning the car is not starting. Yeah. Terminals are tight, mm. but then you get in the car and find out that you're just trying to crank it and it's not starting. You get another battery and put, it starts. By the time you get to your electrician, he's going to tell you you have what we call a parasitic drain. Okay. That means something is staying on. Sometimes it could be the radio and you don't know. Oh, okay. It won't be making noise, but something inside the radio is staying on. Sometimes it's the dome light, that's the light, um, inner lights. Yeah stays on sometimes it's headlamp sometimes it's security and it just keeps draining the battery if but keeps, that doesn't spoil the battery does it It will do that eventually oh okay if it keeps draining keeps draining keeps draining gets to a point where the battery is just bad oh it's just like phones again mm -hmm. <laughs> when it's your phone like keeps phones. going batteries are batteries yeah. anywhere oh. same thing that applies to all of okay. them okay is there something else uh, we could learn this morning that's basically what it is about batteries uh, we no longer have batteries that you can actually take to a battery charger and pull in battery fluid the only thing you can practically do is just charge it so i was going to ask that we cannot take this battery to get battery fluid in it anymore nah. It's These just the old models, like the non really old batteries. Yeah. Oh. So the only thing you can do is take it to a battery charger, then he charges it. Okay. But putting in fluid, change, changing fluid, and the rest. Yeah. Now, is it a good idea to use your battery to charge another person's uh, car? Because I've observed that, and in some cases, the helper, let me use that name, ends up with a bad battery. Why does that happen? Okay, it depends on the other person's car. Okay. If the other person has thick, like, for instance, a bad alternator or electrical issues, yeah. while you're trying to jump it, it's just sucking the life out of your own battery. <gasps> it has happened to my dad, like, <laughs> several times. And I keep wondering why he keeps doing that. It's not a bad people. thing to help people. It's yeah, but it usually ruins the battery. It depends on what is going on in the other person's car. So when I'm jumping for people, jumping batteries for people, I usually keep my own car running. So that's that the best way. That way my battery is still charging and I'm jumping for the person at the same so time. So if you keep your, your, engine, your running. engine running, it helps prevent any issues from the, the other car. The alternator is still charging this. There's oh, a regulator on the alternator, so okay. you don't have... So whenever you're risk. jumping people... But is it, is it possible to even jump a car without the, the engine running? Yes, it's possible. Oh, it's possible? Yeah. You can ah. leave the engine off, just connect your jumper cables and the person jumps. Sometimes they finish doing that and you can't start your own car. Yes, exactly. That's what happens sometimes. Because it has drained your battery. So oh, wow. when you have your engine running, the alternator keeps the battery charged. Yeah. The regulator keeps it regulated so you don't have any issues and the other person safely gets their car done. Fantastic. But nowadays, you have um, this mobile jumper cable. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen it. There's a mobile jumper cable that can actually jump a car. It's Without, like a power bank. Uh, yeah. Without so having to you use somebody else's car. Start worrying about somebody else's okay. car. Okay, okay, fantastic. All right, learned uh, quite a number of things this morning, haven't we? Uh, talking about batteries. Okay, so uh, I'm going to make sure 
I don't jump cars. I'm sorry, but I want my battery life. <laughs> I didn't last. say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't say it, but I have to say it. Just be careful when you're jumping people's exactly. cars. Or keep your engine running, as she said. Thank you so much for being on the show this morning, Ayo Shufela. All right, it's time for our next performance. Uh, Harry Carter is on standby with Mike. Hi. Our second performance of the day is from Harry Carter, who is a rising hip hop artist, trap and also Afro. Now he's back with a banging new single called Wooski. According to him, the track is inspired by his experience with people and how much he values and respects them. How are you doing, man? Harry, wonderful fashion statement, by the way. Thank you. How, I mean, um, is, fashion is a major part of your music, is it? Yes. Okay, so what inspired this, your, <laughs> this, uh, this, uh, this, this pants, the, the, the fashion statement? Basically, my, basically, um, you know, there are two sides to people, you know. Hmm. So I just thought, okay. Why is not going deep? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not I like deep, but you, basically, you just have two sides to people. Hmm. There could be more, but yeah. Yeah. So this. Basically, so that's two sides. So I like yeah. that. I like that. So you have a, um, your song Whiskey and all of that. Um, you said it's inspired by your experiences. Can you tell us a bit about those experiences you were talking about? Well, um, people people can come into your life for different reasons. Mm. You know, so uh, some may act like they really care about you, but mm. in the end, they don't really care about you. But sure. some some stick around for life. You know. But you know, I found yeah. out. I found out everybody is a villain in one story or the other. Yes. There's somebody that'll come and say, look, Harry doesn't care about me. I think it's just life, right? We, there are people like that. We could right. be someone like that to other people, but then yes. wonderful. And, uh, and Wooski was birthed from that particular yes. experience. Yes. How, let, let's talk about the writing process and all of that. How did he go putting into everything? Well, just talk to actually, us. Actually, I did, I start, it started with the freestyle. Okay. Yeah, I did a, a freestyle and put it on my Instagram. And I started getting videos from people Playing mm. the freestyle and saying, ah, you should do this as a song. So I was like, okay, sure, sure. Why All right, not? So good. I, I did it. Great one, great one. So we are making our own request now. Take it away, Harry. <laughs> Wooski. All right, all right. Money, motivational, temptational, sensational. Get this to your cranium, about to be inspirational for money. I'm chasing nigga like it's still vibranium, like Mr. Krabs. All I see is money, I must get the bag. Now, on Mondays, we talk about small businesses uh, making impact in Nigeria. Shegun and Ronke Abiona are co-founders of Nicole and Giovanni, a premium accessory brand wears uh, for both male and female. Now, the company was founded five years ago in 2014, and it produces uh, items like uh, neckties, uh, pocket squares, and others. And both of them are joining me this morning, um, you know, Anybody starting a business in Nigeria in this economy is brave, and you guys are uh, you're my you're my superheroes uh, this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, um, Nicole and Giovanni, uh, this company started five years ago. Uh, tell us how it has been for you. It's been very interesting. Uh, it's been challenging, but at the same time, it's been fantastic. Mm. Um, Started five years ago, like we said. Today, even uh, LinkedIn remem reminded me of exactly five years. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Wait, that's today? Yes. So today is your fifth anniversary. Exactly. Well, hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, wow. So th that's amazing. I mean, yeah. that, you know, it's, it, it's been five years. One of the things that um, is always, always baffles a lot of people is how, despite the challenges that you would find in Nigeria's economy, uh, the challenges of, I mean, power is the biggest challenge, obviously, but there are many other things that regulations, taxes, different things that, that occur um, that are challenges to businesses mm. that entrepreneurs still go out there and still try to make it work. Yeah. So tell us how um, the whole process for you, why you decided that this was a strong enough vision for you to pursue mm. um, and give it your all. Well, I think uh, it all started back in England. Um, I used to work for Barclays. And um, at a point, I started asking myself, is this what I want to do for the rest of my life? Uh, although at a point, I was aspiring to be, you know, the top city banker and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, along the line, I just got a bit, um, not, I won't say tired, but I just felt this is not really what I really wanted to mm -hmm. do. So I, I went the divine way and wanted to know what exactly 
what was in line for me. Mm. And um, just one afternoon, I just heard the word. It was very sharp, and it said socks. Um, it was a bit strange. Mm -hmm. um, after all the education, moving around, and I told myself, okay, if this is it, I will have to ask one person, um, which is my wife. Yeah. And I called her and said, honey, this is what I'm hearing. And the first word she said was, um, if this is exactly what the Holy Spirit is saying, then go for it. Mm. And the moment she said that, I, I, just, I just kicked it up. Mm. And, and that's how it all started. And, and that, that's how the journey started. Now, yeah. I don't care. You um, decided that you were going to support your husband in this thing. And you said, let's do it. Mm. And were there any fears that you had at the beginning? So your husband comes home and says, you know what? I want to quit my job and start making socks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, did you have any fears that, look, um, we don't know how this is going to go, but let's try anyway. Okay, so we didn't just start like he came home socks and then we just <laughs> yeah. launched the business. There was a process. Okay. And I think, you know, when he mentioned it to me, I was also working. I was mm -hmm. working at Ericsson at the time. So there was a process. So he was in Barclays. He was you, in Barclays. So both of you were there. career people making yes, money. So it's not like you people were hustling. No, no, no. no so no, you no. guys had good, stable jobs yeah. in international companies. Yes. Yeah. Right, okay. So continue. Yes. So when he mentioned it to me, and most of the things we do is, like he said, is divinely led. We don't just do things by chance. So when he mentioned it to me, I went on, I did a bit of research to find out if there was a market. Now the research wasn't so conclusive because in the, at the time Nigeria wasn't really, everybody would complain, oh, okay, we we'll wear socks in Nigeria, yeah. because we just socks, you know, but, you know, like I said, when it's divinely led, you just have to faith it, you know. Mm -hmm. So I just did a bit of metric search, you know, and then we had a plan. So when he moved back to Nigeria, because I moved back to Nigeria first, mm. He moved back to Nigeria. He started work with um, FCMB mm -hmm. for a while. So it was a soft landing. It wasn't mm -hmm. an immediate. Okay. Um, so, it, so which, uh, which I think it's also advisable for many yes, people. Yes, a so, lot of people don't. Yeah, so people watching now and, and they're saying to themselves, maybe they're considering somebody watching from his office is saying, hey, so I should just quit my job and go. No, no, no. no, no so no. It's, not, it's, it's not so straightforward no, no, like no. that. No. Mm -hmm. We didn't even, he didn't quit, I quit my job first, you know, so that, no, he quit his job first, yeah, actually. Mm. He quit his job first, you know, for a while we were selling on Jumia and some other platforms, mm. but when he quit his job, you know, he was like, okay, you know what, I'm going to handle, because he's a, he's a fantastic salesperson. Yeah. So, so he I, said, I'm going to take control <laughs> of this but, but thing. I, but at that point, I, I think um, uh, it's about having a very good understanding of what you want to do. Mm. Um, I needed to understand the market. I needed to understand my target audience. I needed to understand, you know, who we were dealing with. Mm. And by the time we identified that, it was easy for me to um, walk away from the, from, from the job. And um, it, w it wasn't really difficult because mm. if I could walk away from Barclays, yeah. I could walk away from any kind of job. Yeah. But at the same time, the, the confidence was there in as much as there was a bit of fear. Um, but I told myself, if this is what I, I've worked for different companies and I've given my best to them, there's no one of them that I, I have worked with that had anything wrong with me. I've mm. always left with records. So I felt if I had given this much to to every employer, you know, I could do it for, for myself. Mm. So I, I went back, you know, with her research. She handles the research, uh, technical stuff. I, I handle the brand and uh, the sales part of it. Mm. So I, I gave it all and I said, OK, you know what? If I'm going to do it, it has to be world class. Mm. And the moment I made that decision, you know, I just, I just took the dive. So let, let's talk about uh, the, the company now, yeah. Yeah, how it started and eventually, because I'm seeing some really nice things here. And, you know, I'm probably going to be making some purchases this, yeah. this morning. <laughs> now, you eventually started the company. Yeah. Now, you founded the company in 2014, and now, you know, it's been, it's been on for a while. The whole process and how people started responding to the brand, uh, and what you were doing, how, how did that work out? How did it all come to We were more online. Mm. We started online. And like I said, um, we, the moment we took that decision to, to take a dive, I, I strategically removed our, our products from every platform mm. to concentrate on our own website, meaning we had to use um, social media and um, digital, digital marketing. marketing. So you, this was a strategy for you because you said you yeah. strategically removed it? Yes. Okay. It, that 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 initially felt very harsh, because of course sales 
permitted. Yeah. 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 But the but the truth was I knew it was gonna happen and over time it was gonna transcend. Mm. So the moment it happened, two two to three months down the lane, we got, you know, the handle of everything and it started going out. Mm. With the help of social media, which you cannot take anything away from. I'm quite strong on LinkedIn also. So um, the target audience is actually on LinkedIn, mm. while in, um, Instagram was just to um, get everybody to know what was going on. And we, we got a hand of it and, and it started and it was, it was Now, one of the things I've also noted is your packaging. Yeah. Uh, the way that you put it together, when you see it, it doesn't look like something that it's just random. It, yeah. Is this something for a target market or a niche audience? Because I'm, I'm seeing uh, you, you've written with love. So yeah. this is like a gift pack that you yeah. can give to someone, either male or female. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've, I've got another one here with yeah. me. I don't know if the cameras can get that, but are you targeting a particular audience? So let me ask, um, I don't really care. Well, actually we target top echelons okay. in the industry. So, so your products are not cheap? Then they're out. They're not cheap. They're premium mm. because we give it 100 mm. percent. In fact, my husband would say 110 percent. So it's for people who value quality and who want to put their best self forward. Mm. So some people really don't mind, but our target customers are top echelon. I, I, because I, I really like the packaging. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I've, that I've, that I've wanted to ask uh, is, does it help uh, to for that a husband and wife are co-founders? I mean. You own the business together, you run it together. So, mm. is it uh, is it more effective for you than if you were running going going it alone? Like either of you was going it alone. Trust me, to, for us, is is the best decision we ever took. Because the moment I I took the dive and um, I, I I was looking for um, the, the the perfect partner, and um, the perfect partner became my wife. Why? Mm. Because she's technical, sound. She's research based. She left as an implementation manager where she was working. So who else would I want to bring in? And um, trust me, she made it so easy. And she's my greatest critic at the same time because I'm, I'm a driver. I, I move. And when I move, nobody can stop me. So she's like the brick. Mm. So anytime I'm moving too fast and she, there's, she, you know, she just tells me, she, you know what, you're moving too fast. Too fast. Yeah. But at the same time, that brings in the balance. Uh, honestly, if it is possible, I would tell everyone who cares to listen and who, who wants to understand mm. um, the intricacies of entrepreneurship to bring in their partner. Yeah. Because they, they see things more originally yeah. and from a different perspective. And at the same time, they want the best for you. Mm. So it's, it's, it's... I love it. I love it's, it. This, it's, 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 it's fantastic. I mean, this, this, uh, this is an inspirational story. You guys should write a book or something or do a, <laughs> uh, some videos so people should follow you around yeah. and get inspired by what you have done. But thank you so much for joining us mm. so much, on the show. I'm seeing cufflinks here as well. Yeah, yeah. You guys just do everything that I need. Yeah. <laughs> it's really. available in our store. In, in yeah. Your, your Funny store. enough, well, we have uh, our store open. It's now open, okay. although we've been online for five years. And finally, after a the lot of... The store is going to be open. Yeah. Open so while, while we're talking about this, can, we, can you just join us in the kitchen for all your hard work and celebrate <laughs> your fifth year anniversary? <laughs> no break here. Huh? You just need to drive. No brakes. <laughs> no brakes. <laughs> just come this way. <laughs> No breaks here. Yeah. Celebrating their fifth year anniversary. One Nicole, the co founders of Nicole and Giovanni. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so please have a seat over okay. here. And uh, that's Chef Mike. Okay. Chef Mike, so very, and very, And the other very Mike over fast. there, this is Mary. Let's, Hi. let's, Hi. let's Hi. let him have a taste and uh, just tell us how you got to it while they're having a taste. Okay. So here we have the frise coaches cake. Mm. And our frise is strawberry. Mm. So don't be confused. <laughs> And then it's cold cheese. It's cold cheese. Yeah. Oh, it's look, 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 at it, look at it on the camera. Oh, wow. <laughs> Looks amazing. Looks amazing. Ah, uh, my God, forget the camera. I want to cut that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, that bit of strawberry. Lovely. <sighs> what? What? Okay. Oh, my God. Okay. One more, one more piece. One more. Yeah, husband and wife, calm down. Just a little, just have a taste, have a taste while we uh, get ready to round off the show. Mm. Um, a big thank you to our uh, friends over at Homely NG for the kitchen accessories on the show. That's right. Um, thanks to everyone who has been a part of the show today. You all are amazing. Thanks for turning up as early as 6 a.m. 
And thanks to you too for watching. Mm. Have a great week. Yeah, have a great week, everybody. Before we go, though. Well done, well done, chef. Well done, good job. Yeah. Thank you. Do you nice. like it? Yeah, Fantastic. Nice. Of course they like it. Nice. Of course they like it. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us and Thank congratulations. You so much. Have a great day. See ya.